In our previous work with two-factor ANOVA, we had two factors, but we only had one observation for each combo of levels in A and levels in B. So in other words, we only had like one observation for tide with cold water. But now we want to move from just having one observation for tide with cold water to having more than one observation. All right, so when we only had like one observation for each combo of detergent and water temperature, we were restricted to testing just two hypotheses. So one of the hypotheses was, are the means among A's different levels equal? And are the means among B's different levels equal? But we were not able to test when we only had one observation per combo. We were not able to test, is there some combo of A and B that has a different mean from the other means from the other combos of A and B? All right, so we want to test for this interaction between A and B. So what we're going to do is increase our number of observations from one to some larger number C. All right, so we're going to denote each observation now that we have multiple observations for each combo, we're going to need three subscripts. All right, so we're, each observation is gonna be called X, I, J, K. So I is for the level of A, J is for the level of B, and then K is for um, which like iteration we've done. So like if we're on the second trial for this combo of A and B, then K is going to be equal to two. So if we're having um, C different observations for each combo, then K is going to go from one to C. All right, so I goes from one to A because I is for the different levels of A. J goes from one to B because um, J is for the different levels of B. And then K tells us which number experiment we are on for that exact combo of A and B. All right, so since we have A different levels, of A, B different levels of B, and C different runs for each combo, then that means that our sample size is A times B times C. All right, so that's our overall sample size. All right, so just like we did before, we need to define some notation. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, when we have a mean and then we have a dot, that means we're going to be averaging over that subscript. So if we have X bar I J dot, that means we're going to be averaging over the K subscript, which means all right, for this combo of level of A and level of B, let's take the mean. So this is like the mean amount of dirt removed if we use this type of detergent and whatever temperature of water. And then X bar I dot dot, so we're averaging over the last two subscripts. So that means that um, this might be like the mean amount of dirt removed by one of the detergents, like the ice level might be tied. And then X bar dot J dot, that means that we're averaging to find the mean amount of dirt removed by whatever water temperature we're looking at, whatever water temperature J is. And then finally, that overall grand mean is X bar dot dot dot. Okay, so if we're trying to find um, the mean for the ice level of A, then that means we have to add up all the different water temperatures and all the different um, trials that we've run. So we add over J and K and then divide by the sample size, which is B times C. Similar story for X bar dot J dot. Our sample size, our number of thingies that we're adding up is one over A times C. And what are the thingies that we're adding up? Well, we're adding over the ith subscript and the kth subscript. So that's what we're doing here. We're adding from I equals one to A and from K equals one to C. And then finally for this last one, we're adding everything up because we're looking for that grand mean. So we add them all up. We're adding over all three of these indices and dividing by the overall sample size. All right, so that's our notation. Now we need to go ahead and write down our total sum of squares. So as you can notice, this is kind of following exactly what we did for one-way ANOVA and two-way ANOVA. We're just making it more complicated. So remember our total sum of squares, that's going to be just our variability between each observation and the grand mean. So we have one observation minus the grand mean, square it, and do that for all of our data points. So we're adding over I equals one to A, J equals one to B, and K equals one to C. All right, so if we maneuver this, just like we did 
in the one-way ANOVA stuff, we can rewrite this as, this total sum of squares as B times C times the variability amongst A's different levels plus A times C times the variability amongst B diff B's different levels. And then here's the variability amongst um, the different combos of A and B. And then finally, we have our error term, which is describing how much variability is there within one combo of level of A and level of B. So remember x bar ij, that's the mean for some combo, and then x ij k is one observation. So we're saying, OK, let's compare each observation within some combo of A and B to what its mean is. Square that, add them all up. All right, so what that tells us is that this is our sum of squares for A. This piece is our sum of squares for B. The middle piece here is our sum of squares for the interaction. And then finally, this last piece here is the sum of squares due to error. All right, so in the next video, we're going to talk about the distributions of each of these and then find our test stats.